What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, July 24th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily Pandemic Update on all things COVID and any other virus and anything that could be a threat to your health. Yes, today we said thing, because we're not just going to talk about COVID and viruses. We have to talk about air qualities as well. Air qualities can impact our health and breathing. But most importantly, the big thing we do here on this channel is we talk about the COVID pandemic. The United States, other parts of the world, are currently in a major summer surge. And in some places, it's currently a winter surge. COVID didn't end. People are still being hospitalized. People are still unfortunately dying, testing positive, long COVID still a thing, but yet you hear less and less about it from all the different health agencies around the world and the various different media outlets. That's why I'm here. I'm here to do the work that, well, they failed to do for you. And if you want to stay informed with what's going on, just subscribe down below. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Share these videos with anyone you know. The more people we inform, the better. Leave your comments down below and remember to hit that notification bell so you're notified when I do my daily updates. All right, today we're going to take a look at some news stories. I'm going to show some things on my site, datareport.info. We're going to talk about air qualities a little bit more than usual today because there's a big problem going on with that. And then we're going to take a look at some data and some states, including some wastewater data as well. All right, starting off, Romania, 82.3% increase in COVID cases in one week. And they say, we have filled almost all the reserves of the children's isolation ward with COVID patients in the last few days. It is the same in adult hospitals. Things are not going good in Romania, and it looks like between July 8th and 14th, they had 1,256 new cases, which again is an 82.3% increase from their previous report. Japan is battling the 11th COVID wave. Data shows as the KP.3 variant evades immunity. The number of newly hospitalized COVID-19 patients at regularly monitored institutions exceeded 3,000 for the first time in about five months. So that's not good. Moving on to this now, the Summer Olympics. Yes, already there is COVID at the Olympics. Yesterday we titled our video, COVID has arrived at the Olympics or something like that. Well, it really has. Yesterday morning, we found out that uh, Australia women's polio, water polo, team had one case of COVID. Then one case became two cases of COVID. Now today we are finding out that there are now five players on the water polo team that have tested positive for COVID. I'm still not seeing the names as of yet, but this is serious and it's something that needs to be addressed. And unfortunately, there are people now that have concerns about the COVID situation over in Paris. Here's the story about that. This is also from Corona Heads Up. We showcase various different accounts on Twitter that tweet things because a lot of times it's useful information that we can relate to you in these videos. All right, Paris Olympics volunteers resign due to the lack of COVID-19 measures. And let's read this quote here. We are more and more worried at the lack of any actions from the organizers to address the epidemic of COVID-19 that is still going on across Europe and around the world. And this is very true. I mean, I would be concerned if I was a volunteer as well. There are going to be thousands of athletes, thousands of spectators. There's going to be a lot of people congregating together. Though be it outdoors in most cases, some cases not. There's going to be a lot of cases where uh, people are congregated in large crowds together, and that's risky. And you just saw already the Australian women's water polo team is already dealing with an outbreak, and there are likely to be more cases. The Olympic Open Ceremony on Friday, yeah, that's likely to cause some cases as well. So 
Yes, this is a relatively concerning and it's something that we're going to have to continue to keep our eyes on. And I do want to show you something else from the site today. A couple things. You're going to note that sometimes you're going to see something here where it shows recent topics on my website. You're going to see something that may throw you off on a loop. Remember, a lot of the sections on my site, such as the COVID positive archive or even the studies and papers section, is just that. It's an archive. Not everything that I post there, as of recent, is going to be something that's brand new. Let me give you an example. You may note here that it says Elton John. Well, Elton John did not test positive for COVID this week. But again, it's an archive. So if I find a celebrity who in the past tested positive, of course, I want to add it so we have the most comprehensive archive possible. And I'm going to be adding more past names. There's a lot of people back in the early days of the pandemic that tested positive. Some real notable names early on that I do feel need to be added. Elton John's actual case was back on or around January 25th of 2022 and at that time he did have to postpone two shows in Dallas and you will also note sometimes I may come across a study that's not recent for COVID you may see me add that but I did add a recent COVID study today and that has to deal with COVID and diabetes and that brings the total number of studies for that now up to six and I think that's going to grow even more we might actually have another section coming here to the archives relatively soon for uh studies haven't decided what that's going to be but i was looking at it and i think we can make yet another section because things are starting to add up once again already moving on that's my website datareport.info remember it's free anyone can become a website member and anyone can add to the archives if you find someone who has had COVID or just recently tested positive for COVID, you know, a notable person, not just, oh, my grandmother tested positive for COVID. No, we're not adding that into the archives, but, you know, a notable performer, political person, musician, someone who's well-known, famous person. Go ahead, add it. Same with studies. You can add COVID studies if you find them as well. Moving on now to the pollen levels for today. And today's allergy map shows 25% of the country is in low to medium status. And unfortunately, yes, orange, once again, has come back in multiple states. Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Colorado, all have orange. That's starting to get up there in that higher color. And we do note there's a lot of green in southeast. Green's a good color. Then we come over to this, air qualities. And we're going to spend some extra time today on air qualities because I know there's a lot of people out there that have breathing difficulties. And this needs to be addressed. Take a look at this. The air quality map. It's really bad right now. Well, let's start off with the good news first. If you're down in Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana, you know, the southeast, uh, South Carolina, you're okay. You're in the green. You start to get north. Take a look here. Across the Great Lakes, some oranges are starting to show up. Then you see some yellow in the northeast. And these oranges that are over the Great Lakes, that's going to be problematic. There's a weather front that is moving through the east coast today and tomorrow. It won't clear until tomorrow. And behind that's a really nice area of high pressure. But it's not going to be perfectly clear. Some of this bad air quality is going to move in. Why? Take a look here in the plains up in Canada. There's wildfire smoke. And this wildfire smoke is problematic. And it is starting to get more and more concerning because there are wildfires, not only in the U.S., there's wildfires up in Canada as well. And it's releasing smoke into the atmosphere. And because of the way the jet stream works, the way the atmosphere works with the winds, that gets spread out. And yes, that smoke can come down to the surface. Let's move on here for a moment. Take a look here. You can see here, just a quick Google search of wildfire smoke shows. Wildfire haze exits as this is in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Then you can see Chicago area. Yes, it's going to impact many different areas in the Northwest, the Great Lakes, and in some cases, maybe the East Coast. Uh, let's take this a step further. Let's take a look at one of the computer weather models that can actually predict where this wildfire smoke is going to go. And you can see here, I'm going to explain what the colors mean. These are lighter shades. That's not bad. These, you know, these lighter shades of blue, kind of like when we take a look at COVID in wastewater. Blue is not terrible. And as you know, orange is usually bad for COVID, right? Well, it's the similar 
deal on this map, although there is some green in between, which can represent moderate levels of wildfire smoke near the surface. And you can see here, across the Rockies, it is really problematic. Up here in Canada, it is really problematic. But you also notice across the Great Lakes. Remember, let's go back for a second. Remember I showed you? There's some oranges there. Well, that's projected by this model to spread to the southeast a little bit and I want to show you that you can see here it does spread into Pennsylvania and portions of the mid-Atlantic it continues to be a big problem up in Canada across the northern plains across Nevada Idaho Montana Wyoming all these areas uh, Washington state you're not too bad yet portions of eastern Oregon you are bad but we have to continue to watch this and look at this Yes, it's projecting that perhaps maybe some new wildfires start and that more smoke does crop up in the coming days. And as we get into, this would be tomorrow at this point we're looking at now, we can see Washington, Oregon, it actually gets worse. And this model actually goes out to on or about first thing Friday morning. You can see Pennsylvania. You do get in on it. Not bad, but it's enough that you may be able to smell it in the atmosphere. And we can see as we do get to the end of this forecasting model period, things do get a little bit better, but it'll still be noticeable across portions of the plains and the Pacific Northwest and in Canada. These wildfires they are going to be a problem for the foreseeable future, so I don't think we're going to be done talking about this. Heat-related illnesses, that's something else we have to talk about in the summertime as well, and they're definitely noticeable in the mid-Atlantic region and the northeast. Southeast, yes, they're there. Not as bad as we saw last year at this time, if memory serves me correct. And the west coast, yeah, the west coast is not doing uh, good at all. We can see here it's higher than average in many different places. And the northern plains, not too good. Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, the Great Lakes. Yes, there's some problems there as well. Want to learn more about the weather and climate and everything? You can do that over on my other page, Climate Data Report. I'll be tweeting there some this evening. Taking a look now at Philadelphia for Tuesday. 874 EMS incidents were reported. Let's do a live look in at Southeast Pennsylvania. First off, Montgomery County. And we can see here, yes, there are currently 12 calls. Just a general mixing of things. In Springfield Township, I do note there's cardiac arrest. And in Red Hill Municipality, uh, a stroke is being reported at this time. Over in Chester County, Pennsylvania. Oh my, take a look at this. Not one. Not two, not three, but four sick person calls at this time. Four of them. That's not good. And they don't state what the calls are, but COVID could be a factor. I'll show you why in just a second. Also seeing some other stuff, heart problems, diabetic emergency, exposure to heat. It's not really that hot outside, although it is humid in southeast Pennsylvania today. Here's why we could be seeing an increase in sick person calls. Look at this. Chester County, Pennsylvania which is the county I just showed you, is reporting a large increase in COVID at this time. So it's like I always say, they can suppress the hospital data information across the U.S. And let's face it, only about 34% of hospitals are reporting data at this time. But if there's a CAD system, or if you can hear dispatch, guess what? They can't hide it totally. A lot of sick calls, you know, four of them right now. That's a red flag. Sick calls going up and large increase in COVID and wastewater in the summertime. Who knows? Could be COVID. We don't know for sure, but hey, it could be. All right, taking a look now at Walgreens for this week. National positivity rate was 39.6%. That was up by 0.4%. With testing going up, yes, cases are still rising in the United States. We have not peaked yet. The first place to peak will be the West Coast. And though I should say... There is a state here. Let's take a look at Virginia. Virginia's positivity rate did drop this week. 33.6% versus 40.8%. That's down by 7.1%. Total test, 211 versus 184. Why did I just show you Virginia? Well, at the end of this video, we're going to show you Virginia's dashboard that states perhaps some good news. Remember that. They're dropping with the testing being up, but I think it could be a legitimate drop. I'll show you that at the very end of this video. Taking a look at Canada, the COVID viral activity level. Let's, you know what, let's refresh this. Yeah, I thought that was behind. Okay, COVID viral activity level has now just shifted, as you see, to high. 
Flu A, moderate. Hey, look at that. Flu B is once again being detected. Moderate. Viral activity level for RSV is low. That's very interesting to see both flu levels. Moderate in the summertime? Yeah, that's not a good thing. We're not happy about seeing that. Uh, let's take a look at a couple wastewater sites. First off, I just want to show you wastewater scan nationally for COVID. Yeah, it's still rising at this time. Now let's go to two wastewater sites. How about we come up here to the northeast? It's been about a week or so since we've checked in with Boston. Boston at this time, Massachusetts, does continue to rise. And to be fair, let's go take a look at a major city out on the west coast. How about we take a look at a really big wastewater site? How about Los Angeles? Can we see Los Angeles peaking? Let's see. I hope. Well, they're doing this where they have the chart really zoomed out, but it does look to me like the levels in Los Angeles at this wastewater site of 4 million people. It's coming in saying high levels at this time. doesn't look like it's moving all that much. Let's change wastewater sites. I'm not understanding why they zoom the chart out so much sometime. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Let's try this wastewater. This is far eastern L.A. In this site, it's saying medium, but again, look at this level. That is really low. We've seen other sites that are, heck, close to 1,000 pathogens that come in at medium. You get the idea here. The first site that I showed you still showed high. Levels are still high across portions of Los Angeles. And real quickly, let's take a look at what's going on in San Francisco. This is also a big wastewater site. 750,000 population served. Still high wastewater levels. Take a look at this. It is starting to drop. It is dropping. Perhaps San Francisco has finally peaked. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, trying to be very optimistic. Alrighty, moving on here. National Emergency Department visits. Overall, they did continue to rise on the most recent update. Epidemic status continues to grow across the United States. Taking a look here now at New Jersey. I do note, New Jersey, they're finally stopping this random hospitalization business and things are starting to increase a bit faster now we can see here back on the 14th they had 332 people in the hospital fast forward to today new jersey is now reporting 462 people in the hospital this increase it is starting to uh, become a little bit faster which is not a good thing eight people on a ventilator in the icu at this time 53 discharges in new jersey 63 discharges are reported new york state for today 1520 positive new cases reported and that is still increasing slightly it looks to be about just a steady trend upward taking a look at new york state hospitalizations still higher than any point from last week at 1123 with 107 people in the icu though this number is lower than yesterday already ending today on just a little piece from Virginia on a little bit of a good note take a look at this COVID-19 emergency department visits and urgent care visits in the past week in Virginia have actually dropped take a look at this last week it was 2417 for the two metrics combined this week it's dropped to 2013 and then when we take a look at COVID like illness visits that has dropped as well Last week was really high, 6,463 patients visited for that. This week, 4,731. That's quite the drop. I think that's a good thing. Remember, sometimes you don't follow the national trend. Sometimes it goes by region and even right down to a state and even right down to an individual city. Local dynamics, local climate, things that are going on in your city, state, or region can drive waves differently than other parts of the country or different cities. I mean, you could be in one town where COVID's going up and surging, and then you go to another town five miles away. Oh, hello. They're not seeing a COVID wave. That's the way this works. It doesn't happen uniform everywhere. Yes, we're seeing a surge all across the country, but the waves in each individual area starts and peaks at different times. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update. We'll have another edition of the Pandemic Update again tomorrow. If you enjoyed this update, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell, share these videos with anyone you know, and remember, leave a comment down below and 
As always, my website, datareport.info, and COVID Data Report over on X. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again next time. Have a fantastic Wednesday evening.